Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a book haul. For some reason, I've been going a little crazy lately. I don't know if it's like the holiday season or what, but I've just had a bunch of books that I decided I wanted to buy, and so I just did it all at once. My wallet is not a huge fan of this plan that I've come up with, but Merry Christmas to me, because now we have a lot of books to talk about. I will warn that this book haul is going to be a little bit eclectic. I feel like my reading taste is really random, and I read a lot of different genres, so there's not really a theme to this. It's just like whatever books I had read recently, and I felt like I wanted to have a copy of on my shelf. The first book is The Christmas Wish by Lindsay Kelk. This is a Groundhog Day type of story about a girl who keeps repeating Christmas, and she's trying to figure out what's going on. It's British, and it's very, very funny. I laughed out loud multiple times by reading this. I was really pleasantly surprised because it is such a random thing that I picked up, but I genuinely thought this book was laugh out loud funny. I enjoyed it so much. So I was like, you know what? I want to own a copy of that. And it's, it's festive and cute and it fits for December. Next up, we have Shady Hollow by Juno Black. This is actually the book that I'm currently reading. I thought this was so delightful that when I was only 25% into it on the audiobook from my library, I was passing by a Barnes & Noble and I decided to go get a copy of it. This was literally yesterday and I got it hot off the presses for you for this book haul. I just love the cover. It's so cute. I actually heard about this book on Monica and Reagan's new podcast, the Cozy Club podcast. If you have not listened to that yet, you absolutely should because our tagline is that it's meant to be like a warm hug and I would absolutely agree with that description of their podcast because it's so adorable. I believe it was in the first episode they were recommending Cozy Books because their first or second Second episode and so Monica was talking about this book and it just sounded so delightful I really wanted to read it so then I saw that my library had it and then lo and behold I got a copy of it and I am just excited to have this on my shelf the next two books are from Olivia Atwater's Regency fairy tale series this is book number two and book number three the first book is half a soul which I have over there already on my shelf these are basically just like the series name implies they are literally Regency fairy tales but these are just such cozy and sweet books I love them so much half a soul is definitely my favorite in the series um, and then I would probably say number two and then number three but they're all really good. Next up we have The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. This was a very random book for me to read and pick up and then get a copy of. I think I saw someone talking about it on TikTok and I put a hold at my library and I totally forgot about it and months later it became available and I decided to read it and I had fairly low expectations. Like the girl on TikTok said it was really cute but I just thought it was gonna be like any other contemporary romance that I read but it ended up being way better than I thought it would be. It is about this group of guys who have a book club where they read romance books to improve their relationships and it is just so cute and so funny. I love this series so much. I've actually already read the second book as well and I probably will get a copy of that soon um, but when I went to Barnes & Noble yesterday when I picked up um, Shady Hollow I also picked this up because I saw it in the romance section and I think I want to own this whole series because it's so cute. The second book is also very very good. The next book I did not need to buy at all but I saw it at the Dollar Tree and I felt like I could not leave it behind and that is Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend. I have no idea what the sequel to Nevermore was doing at Dollar Tree, but I needed to get it because I felt like it would be disrespectful to Jessica Townsend to not pick it up because this is my all-time favorite middle grade series. The next two books are by the same author, but very different genres, and that is T. Kingfisher. This first book, The Hollow Places, is a horror book about a girl who is helping her uncle at his Museum of Oddities, and she finds this passage in the random wall that leads to this world where there's all these like hills. It's very foreboding, very like cosmic horror-esque, and what I love about this book is that even though it is very spooky okay, uh, T. Kingfisher has a very funny way of writing that adds a lot of humor into all of these scenes and I love this so much and I really wanted to get, I believe this is the British cover. I like the American cover but the British one I just feel like adds to the vibe of like what the book is about so much more. So I decided to get this off of Book Depository and I'm really excited to have a copy of it because I love this book so much. I think this might be one of my favorite horror books that I've ever read. And then the other T. Kingfisher book that I got was Sword Heart, which is a cozy fan Fantasy. This is about a woman named Hala who works as a housekeeper for her great uncle. And at the very start of the book, he passes away and he leaves all of his wealth and inheritance to her. And his family is not feeling great about that. They're really angry. And so they're trying to force Hala into marrying her cousin, but she does not want to marry him because he's kind of gross and he has clammy hands. And so at the very start, she is in her room and she finds this sword on the wall. And so she wants to fall on the sword and like kill herself. And so there's this very comical scene where she like strips all of her clothes off. But when she unsheaths the sword to do it. She finds out that there is a man named Sarkis who lives inside the sword and he is now her protector because she owns it. And so they take off running away from her family and it's sort of a journey book as they go along trying to get away and figure out what to do. And there's a little bit of romance between uh, Sarkis and Hela and it's super adorable and I really really love this. So of course I wanted to have a copy of it. I'm loving T. Kingfisher so far. 
With these next two books, you might say, Sarah, you might have a problem. And to that I say, I do not have a problem. I absolutely need these two copies of Persuasion as well as the two on my shelf and the bind up of all of Jane Austen's work. So I technically have five copies of Persuasion. I do need that in my life. I'm sorry if you think I don't, but you're wrong. For those of you who have missed it, I became a classics girly this year. I did a video where I read all of Jane Austen's works and I loved Persuasion. Obviously this is my favorite of all the books that she has written and I picked up this book when I was in LA. We went to the Ripped Bodice, which is a bookshop dedicated to romance books and so they had this delightful little copy. I've actually never seen this online so I was like why not pick this up as a little LA souvenir. I love the little artwork and then there's some flowers on the side. I feel like you can't really see that but it's very cute. And then yesterday when I was at Barnes & Noble there was a classic section right next to the romance section. So when I was picking up the romance book club I saw this and I was like mm, I need it. This is the children classics version and I find it so beautiful. I've been wanting to get all of Jane Austen's books from children. I don't really know what children is. I've never heard of it before. I guess maybe they're like a classics publishing thing. I saw that they had like a bunch of different classics. Sorry I'm taking the sticker off as I'm talking to you. I hate when you put stickers on books. Like that's so annoying. But anyway I saw this and I was like hmm do I need that for $25 even though I already have a bunch of other copies of Persuasion? Yeah I do. So I got it. So I might have an issue but I love it. If you are interested in reading Jane Austen, I would highly recommend reading. I don't know if Persuasion actually should be the first Jane Austen book you read. Maybe you should just go for Pride and Prejudice first. But definitely my favorite, very angsty, second chance romance. We love Captain Wentworth and Anne. Next up, we have another cozy fantasy, and that is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is a book that has just been taking the book community by storm. I feel like anyone who has been wanting to get into cozy fantasy this year has been reading this. I read this for one of my most recent vlogs, and I immediately bought a copy of it because it's so adorable, and I absolutely love the cover. The art is so cute. This is about an orc who is tired of being a mercenary and so at the very start of the book she retires and she moves to a small village where she opens up a coffee shop but the issue is that no one in this fantasy village has ever heard of coffee before and so she teaches them all about the bean water and this is just full of really delightful characters. There's a little bit of a sapphic romance between her and the succubus that works for her and then there is the most adorable character named Thimble who is a mouse that bakes all of the pastry for the coffee shop and so if you love coffee or cafes or just like low stakes fantasy this is perfect for you it's so adorable I don't even like coffee and I felt the ambiance like I'm not a coffee drinker at all but I wanted to drink this coffee and I definitely wanted to eat all of Thimble's little baked goods the next book I've hauled is actually my book of the month pick this is a book that I actually paid for myself I have not been sponsored by book of the month in a while and so I decided to pick up Babbel because a lot of people have been babbling about this <laughs> Although I do see people pronouncing this as Babel, but I feel like that's just like the British way of saying it. I don't know anything about this book except for the fact that it was very anticipated for a lot of people. I didn't even know it was coming out until it came out, but then everybody was like, oh my god, I've been waiting for this book. And I'm like, oh, have we been waiting for this book? I don't know. And it's been getting pretty mixed reviews, so I'm a little nervous to read it. I know that it's like magical, dark academia, and it has something to do with history. It takes place in 1828. I had no idea. And I know that there is like silver magic. Like people use like literal like silver to conduct magic. I would assume that there's something about a tower, like the Tower of Babel. The next book we have is My Pride and Joy. This book is actually my heart. I read this book and I wept. If you watched the video where I read this book, you saw me weeping. I literally cried in the video because of how emotional this book makes me. And that is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. Literally the minute that I finished the audiobook for this, I bought a copy because of how much this book fucked me up. I loved it so much. It's so beautiful. It is a sweeping generational book about this woman named Sanja who ends up having a child out of wedlock and then she marries a pastor and they move to Japan and it's during the occupation of Korea by Japan and so they are Korean immigrants living in Japan and it's all about their generations after Sanja has children and all of her children's children and like what ends up happening and it is just about generational trauma. It is so emotional. I don't even know how to describe how much I like this book or how to describe the plot. I would just say if you like kind of literary 
generational fiction, I think that you would enjoy this. This is not typically the type of book that I would pick up, but the vlog that I read it for was Monica Kim Chooses My TBR. And so I know this is one of her favorite books, so she really wanted to see if I would like it. And she was so right. Like, honestly, I should just always listen to Monica when she tells me to read things because I liked pretty much everything except for the Brandon Sanderson book that she told me to read. And this was so good. So I had to have a copy of it. I loved it so much. Next up, we have The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. I do not know why Amazon sent this to me wrapped in plastic. I really should not have done that on camera, but I want to get the plastic off. This is a horror novella about a man who works as a psychiatrist. And so he goes to a new hospital at the very start of the book where he discovers that there's a patient who's been there since he was seven years old and no one is allowed to treat this patient because very weird vibes go on around him and a lot of doctors have gone crazy trying to treat him. And so he is a fresh blood at this hospital and he's like, listen, I know what I'm doing. So you should let me at this patient because I will know how to treat him and so they let him start doing it and crazy stuff starts to happen this is the most perfect horror novella that i've ever read actually to be honest i've not read that many horror novellas but it's the perfect length it's like 200 pages so it's like long enough that you get enough of the story but this was like five stars so good i actually read this for a halloween reading vlog if i can link that down below if you want to watch it but i loved it so much and jasper dewitt the author actually commented on the video and said thank you for enjoying his book. I get a little freaked out when authors watch my videos, but I guess it was fine because I liked his book. But whenever authors interact with me when I read their books, I'm always like, please don't listen to me when I review things because I'm kind of a bitch. I actually like the cover so much more in person than I did online. Um, the silver is actually like reflective and I like the feeling of it. It's kind of like matte. I don't know how to describe it, but I like it. Next up, we have the tiniest book I've ever seen, and that is Spine Shivers, The Grin in the Dark by J.A. Dark. It's not a dark in a title and author name. I saw this on Jordaline's channel and I decided to get a copy of it because it was really cheap. It was like $6 on Amazon. And I believe it's like a middle grade series of like little haunted stories. And a lot of people online were saying it reminded them of like Goosebumps or Fear Street. And those were my shit when I was younger. And so the way that Jordaline sold this book really made me want to pick it up and read it. It's about a teenager who's babysitting for his cousins, I believe. And while his aunt is away, he's kind of like snooping around the house and he comes across his aunt's room where there's this like giant like clown statue in there. And he's like, what the fuck is that? That's kind of creepy. And then later when his aunt calls to be like, how are the kids doing? He's like, oh, they're fine. But like, why the fuck do you have like a giant clown in your room? And she's like, what clown? And then you realize that like, there's a clown in the house. I don't know. I feel like that was a bad description of it. You should probably go watch Jordaline's videos about it if you want a better description. But I decided to pick it up. I haven't read it yet, but it was really cheap online and she really sold me and they didn't have an audiobook for this. So I was like, I guess I'll just get a copy and read it. I feel like I could read this in like one sitting. And then lastly, for all the books that I personally bought, I have Lower Olympus by Rachel Smith. I don't really read graphic novels very often, but I have been seeing people read this. I actually have a friend who is not a booktuber who uh, I, I worked with in the past and she's been posting about this so much on Instagram and she's an artist and so she likes to draw like fan art for this and so I don't know it just kind of like hyped me up and I felt like I wanted to pick it up so I decided to get the first volume on Amazon and I'm really excited because the art style is just like really beautiful I believe this started out as like an online comic and then it just got so popular oh yeah it's a webtoon webtoon yes it started as a webtoon and then eventually they published it for real and I don't know I just kind of want to get into this I love the art I love the vibes it's a Persephone retelling or maybe it's not even a retelling maybe it's just Persephone I don't know. Lore Olympus. We'll read it. Greek mythology. We'll see what happens. I'll let you know. And then the last thing we're going to do is a cheeky little unboxing because the Aardvark book club reached out to me on Instagram and they asked me if they could send me a book box. I don't know which box this is. This might be November. I don't know. We are kind of probably far out from which box this is intended to be, but I love their design. This box is so cute. And I thought I haven't unboxed something in a while, so why not? I do not have scissors, but I do have this little hair clip. Okay, that's not, that's not working. Okay, I went to the kitchen and cut the tape. Let's see what's inside. First off, they gave me two little bookmarks with their logo at the top. Very cute. We love to see it. And then they gave me a little postcard. And then we have Closer to Okay by Amy Watson. I've never heard of this book a day in my life. So let's read what it's about. That is a long 
ass description. I'm going to skim it for you guys and summarize. Okay, so from what I read, it's about a girl who's a baker and she starts a romance with the guy who owns the coffee shop across the street. I've never heard of this before, but I do like the cover. I like the colors, it's very cute. And we got a little Aardvark logo at the top. <gasps> oh, the next book, I've actually been wanting to read this. This is Ithaca by Claire North. Claire North wrote this book. I cannot remember the name of it. I read it a couple of years ago and it was one of my favorite books of that year. I think I read it in like 2018 or 2019 and I really enjoyed it. And so I haven't read Claire North since and I saw this a while ago and I was like, maybe I should read that. I'm not always a huge fan of like Greek mythology stuff, but because I liked Claire North's other book so much, I thought that I should pick this up. I believe it's a retelling of Penelope, who is the wife of Odysseus, which is like the, the Odyssey, um, if you're familiar with that. Is that Greek mythology? I know it's by Homer, right? <laughs> do not quote me on any of this. I do not know what I'm talking about, but I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I actually really have been wanting to read this, so I'm excited that I have a copy of it. Very, very nice. Thank you so much, Aardvark Book Club. But that brings me to the end of this very random and chaotic book haul. I just have to say, Merry Christmas to me. I'm very grateful to have been able to buy all these books for myself. I hope that you are having a great holiday season, no matter what holiday you celebrate. And let me know if you've bought any fun books lately, or if there are any books that you think that I would like based on these other books that I've been buying. As you can tell, I tend to only buy books that I've already read or I have a very like high chance of liking. Still nervous about reading Babel, but that's neither here nor there. But yeah, if you've made it to the end of this video, you can use a stack of books emoji in your comment to let me know that you made it here and that you enjoyed it. And thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.